that was We Are Forever by Testa. This is My Night Out Radio. I am DJ Sekowetti. With me in studio tonight, we have the immortal Tony Jones. I'm freaking starving, the starving <laughs> Tony Jones. <laughs> well, we're going to we're gonna vary our way away from food now. Not that it would hurt either one of us to skip a few meals. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, having skipped a few meals... I, Sucks. I, yeah, it does. So, I'm going to talk about Comic-Con. Comic-Con's coming up quicker than a rash... Uh, it's November 6th, 7th, and 8th, and they are doing, they're doing amazing things, is all I can say. They are bringing a lot more and a lot of new celebrities that have not been here previously. And if you're a Star Trek fan, this is your year. Oh, yeah. This is definitely going to be the year of Star Trek. Also, you're, if you're a Miami Vice fan, uh, Don Johnson is not going to be there, but they do have quite a few people from the uh, the Miami Vice franchise that will be in uh, in the Comic-Con. Um, now, there's a few problems that people keep bringing up with Comic-Con, and they have worked very diligently to solve these problems. Uh, first off, Comic-Con is not going to be strictly at the convention center. They have booked the Dunkin' Donuts Center as well. So they have effectively, if not doubled, tripled the size of in the words of in the words of Donald Trump, it's going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they they're bringing in uh, literally triple the square footage that they had before, so they have to fill the space, which means more vendors, more celebrities, uh, more cosplay chicks. Yes, the cosplay chicks. There is nothing wrong with a two hundred pound Sailor Moon look alike. <laughs> Granted, they don't with look a beard. Alike. <laughs> And his name is Bob. <laughs> but they're also upgrading their after parties. They make the Friday night and Saturday night after parties well worth it. They're opening an extra night. Uh, they're opening, I believe it's 5 o'clock on Friday, which they never did before. Um, they're, they're just doing everything they possibly can to prevent the over-admittance problem, which I will call it. I've coined that phrase, the over-admittance problem of 2014. <clears throat> the, uh, I, I had a chance to sit down and chat with the, uh, the state fire marshal who made the call to stop people from coming in. And you heard this first, and I will probably get him in studio one of these point days when he's not afraid to get behind a microphone. <laughs> um, originally, Providence Fire wanted to not only stop people from coming in, but start kicking people out. The state fire marshal who ran, who, or who was running the, uh, the, the fire marshals at that point, uh, made the call to not let people in, but not kick them out as well. So you're going to hear stories, and these are true stories. There's a lot of hate out there. There is a lot of hate. Um, the, one of the biggest stories that I heard, which I did confirm was true, that William Shatner himself stepped outside <laughs> for a cigarette and was not allowed back in. Here's a guy who's getting paid more than most people pay for their house <laughs> just to be there. Sorry, sir, you can't come in. <laughs> uh, that, that, and that's just one of the stories. But if you waited your turn, and yeah, I understand people get ticked off and say, heck with this, I'm out of here. Had you waited in line, and everybody got in. Like we talked about earlier, um, some of the people who come to events like this don't exactly get out that often. And they're prone to social anxiety. And you know, just having a huge crowd like that, uh, people started freaking out. True, true. I mean, I, w I was in the middle of it. It took me, I, I want to say, close to a half hour to get from one corner of uh, the con to the opposite corner. And, you know, I, I'm a big guy. I know how to move in crowds because I've been working in clubs my whole life. I had a hard time getting through those crowds. You were packed. I, I saw one guy go down. He had, you know, the social anxiety got the best of him. And if it wasn't for him being literally 10 feet from the access door that we loaded in, they would not have been able to get him out. There were that many people. But they have worked on it. They have got so much more square footage. They're, they're limiting the amount of three-day passes. They're limiting the amount of one-day passes. So they do not have that problem again. 
and you will see us there. Luckily for us, they're not limiting the size of people that are allowed in the door. <laughs> yes, I figure this way. If they could bring a forklift in, that <laughs> forklift could probably hold me and bring me to my table. That's what I'm angling for, Steve, if you're listening. <laughs> but, but still, we, we are going to be there. Rhode Island Free Radio, My Night Out Radio, we have a table there. Definitely look us out. Uh, look us up. Look for us. Uh, we're not that hard to to <laughs> to spot. <laughs> and we're gonna have free stickers, free pins. I got some free CDs to give away. So um, you know, your wallet gets a little light at the end of the con. Come on by and swing by and see us. Uh, likewise, I have uh, stickers, uh, free pictures. If, if you want us to sign something, I'll be more than happy to sign anything you have. Um, including boobies. Boobies are always fun to sign. You got a firm pressure on it. Two hands. <laughs> Deb, if you're listening, shh. <laughs> Someone's sleeping on the couch tonight. Again. But, yeah, definitely look us up. And we're also, I don't know about Tony, but I have T-shirts. Um, the only way I actually get to replace any of my sound equipment that I use for live shows is by selling T-shirts. So definitely buy a T-shirt from me. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that at the con. Uh, we will also have the Rhode Island Free Radio Girls. That's right. We have conned two females. Listen up, nerds. <laughs> we have conned two females into showing up in costume all three days. Um, unfortunately, one of them might be my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, I, I don't think there's anything else I can add to it. Uh, Are you going to do any cosplaying? Uh, personally, I, I'm going to show up. In I heard costume. you might be coming as a local, not local, a national uh, celebrity chef. Uh, on Friday, I will be showing up as Guy Fieri. I'm thinking about doing the Blues Brothers routine. So if you see a big-ass Blues Brother walking around, <laughs> that just might be me. Well, definitely want to look for us. Definitely hit us up. Um, we're going to have papers there so we can get you emails, get you out on uh, mailing lists so you can keep keep abreast of what's going on. I love using that word, abreast. <laughs> that, that's that's going to be the show for the night because I just can't top with that. Um, we're going to leave here with a, a, a sorrowfully a defunct band called the Jesse Minute. I luckily did have the chance to work with them once uh, back in the old Blazes days. The name of the song is Sweet On Me. You're listening, or you were listening to My Night Out Radio. This is DJ Psycho Eddie. Have a good night, everybody.
Gun. Pull down the face mask, make some love. Got four best friends right till the end. Jimmy Jack Jack and Jimmy Slug.